everyone. This is Dylan from Dylan's Reptile Time. Hope you're all doing okay. Uh, so in this video, I thought we'd have a look at one of my favorite species of toad. Everyone's got a favorite type of toad, right? Yeah, I'm sure you have. Uh, my favorite is the European green toad. And we've got one here that you can have a little look at. So this is the European green toad. And with those beautiful green markings on their body there, great character. It's easy to see why they're one of my favorite types of toad. Now they're obviously called green toads because they've got these green markings all over their back. Some are covered in these in this green pattern. Um, some have like little spots, little patches of green. Uh, some are more kind of a uniform greenish brownish color on their body. They've all the, got this white uh, belly as well. And uh, some have a few kind of red spots dotted around their back as well. Gorgeous. So in the wild, these toads are found throughout Central and Eastern Europe, all the way over to Russia, and they just creep into uh, China as well. They're, they're not to be confused with the American green toad, which is a totally different type of toad it's from America as well. Uh, and I'm pretty sure when I was growing up, because I used to keep these as a kid, uh, they were just known as European green toads, and they all had a Latin name of Bufo viridis. Uh, but doing a bit more research on them uh, for this video, it turns out that through genetic research through you know, from uh, green toads throughout their range, they've actually got quite a complex and interesting taxonomy. There's about 14 different species of green toad throughout their range. And I'm pretty sure by the end of this video, there's probably probably a couple more. OK, so I'm going to try and explain green toads in a bit more detail. They all belong to a family uh, or genus of true toad called uh, Bifotus. They used to be known as Bufo. That's Bufotus. Uh, when I say true toad, uh, they that means they all belong to the family Bufonidae. Uh, they're found all over the world, true toads, apart from Australia and Antarctica. And they all have this general warty skin. Uh, they've got these paratoid glands on their back as well. Okay, with me so far? Good. So with the help of some crude maps that I've put together, I'm going to try and explain their uh, different species and their distribution. I'm not going to cover them all, uh, but just the main ones found in Europe, North Africa, and just about creep into uh, Asia as well. Okay, let's go. So to start with, you've got the European green toad, Bifotus viridis, found through much of Central and Eastern Europe into Russia. I've actually made a slight mistake on this map as they actually cover more of Germany than that and they creep into Far Eastern France as well. You've got the African green toad, Bifotus belongeri, that's from North Africa, from Western Sahara over to Egypt. You've got the Sicilian green toad, that's Bifotus belongeri siculus. It's actually treated as a subspecies of the African green toad, that one, that's from Sicily and neighboring islands. Then you've got the variable green toad, Bifotus to city bundus and that's found from turkey all the way to go iraq iran into russia you've got the balearic green toad uh that's bifotis balericus which is found on the balearics and in italy corsica you've got the cyprus green toad that's bifotis cypriensis that's purely found on the island of cyprus that one you've got the perrins green toad that's bifotis peroni that's from iran through to turkmenistan and kazakhstan then you've got the puzal's toad hope i'm pronouncing that right you've got bifotis puzawi that's from northern afghanistan over to china Phew! So we've actually got five green toads at the moment. They're all so sold to me as European green toads, but looking at them, they're all slightly different. You know, there might be a bit of a, a mix in there because uh, throughout their range uh, where they kind of overlap, you know, they, they do hybridize a bit. So you'll get a kind of half a variable, half a you know, European green toad. So looking at these ones, there might be a, a bit of a mix there. You never know. So size-wise, they're not a huge toad, you know, nice sized toad. Uh, the females get a little bit bigger than the males. And green toads, they could, can live up to about 12 years old. So in the wild, they're found in quite a few different habitats. So they're found in like grasslands, marshland areas, uh, meadows, bushland, uh, like forests, sandy areas like sand dunes. Uh, they're also found in urban areas like city parks and gardens. Uh, we found them around hotel complexes as well when we've been away uh, on holiday. And they're usually found around uh, bodies of fresh water, you know, ponds. But the ones that we found in Greece and Cyprus uh, have been found around kind of brackish water, you know, like salty water right next to the sea. Now, if you're going to keep them as a pet, especially here in the UK, probably the best way is uh, in an outdoor enclosure. And we've got ours in a, in a quite a smallish outdoor enclosure with plenty of plants, bark, you know, places for them to hide. We've got a little water area for them as well. Uh, it's basically just a couple of coal frames knocked together. 
dug down about 10 inches so that the, during the winter, because we're going to keep them over, over winter in there, they can dig down and it escape the frost if it gets a, a bit too cold. So what do green toads like to eat then? Uh, well, like all amphibians, they're carnivores. So the green toad would eat a variety of uh, little invertebrates like worms, crickets, you know, spiders, slugs, all kinds of things like that. We feed ours uh, on a variety of mealworms, crickets, locusts, and uh, just anything that would kind of fall into the outdoor enclosure. Any bugs will get snapped up pretty quickly. So in the wild, the green toad would have a few different predators. Uh, so they would have snakes, you know, European green toads would get snapped on by grass snakes, dice snakes, for example. They get eaten by birds of prey that would swoop down and grab them. And they would also get eaten by predatory uh, wetland birds like herons and egrets. They wouldn't think twice about devouring a green toad. So during the colder months uh, of the year, the green toad would kind of dig themselves down into the ground and they would brumate. So they would slow their bodies and their metabolism right down and go into this pretty much inactive state. And during the uh, spring, as it gets a bit warmer, they'll come out of that brumation and they'll start to breed. So the males would be, you know, during the spring and summer, they can be heard um, calling to females to try and attract a mate. It's kind of a really high pitched cricket like chirping noise that they make. It's quite intense. And um, they also develop these rubbery pads on their hands called nuptial pads. And they use them to, you know, like a lot of toads, they use them to just grip onto the female during amplexus. And the female, she would lay uh, about, you know, fat, well, about 10,000 eggs, thousands of eggs in these kind of strings of eggs like that. And they'll turn into tadpoles and then hopefully little mini green toads. We're, we're hoping to breed ours next year. So they'll be going into brumation pretty soon now. Uh, probably need a few more males and females thrown into the mix as well. Maybe about 10 or so altogether to stand a, a good chance of uh, breeding next year. Right. So I hope you enjoyed that, learning all about the green toad. And hopefully you can appreciate uh, why I love them so much. You know, look at this little guy. How can you not love uh, a toad like that? This is a painting that my dad did, by the way, of a, a toad we used to have as a pet uh, about 35 years ago now. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Right. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back again soon with another video. So take care. Bye.